ex-advisor of the Ministry of Defense of Ukraine, Sahi Kuzan, has revealed details of several operations of the main intelligence directorate involving the Russian military. They include the recruitment of a cadre military officer, Daniel Alferov, who helped 11 military men of the Russian Federation to surrender and also to implement the blowing up of the Russian Army officers' headquarters. This is written by analysts of The Telegraph. Also, the main intelligence directorate organized a sabotage on the Russian missile ship Serpukov in the Kaliningrad region. The operation was carried out by a Russian sailor who later crossed the border and switched to the side of Ukraine. The ship, a carrier of Kinzhal and Onyx cruise missiles, was at the Russian naval base in Baltisk, Kaliningrad region and, according to the DRU, could have been redeployed to reinforce the Russian Black Sea Fleet. The details of the operation were kept secret for several months and only in July, during a press conference, were the details revealed. The explosion on the ship was carried out by a former Russian soldier of the Russian Baltic fleet, pseudonym Goga, who had access to state secrets, the Telegraph said. Besides, after the missile attack on a children's hospital in Kyiv, one of the Russian pilots addressed a Ukrainian chatbot, passing secret information about his unit. The pilot was shocked by the attack on civilians, which prompted him to cooperate with Ukrainian intelligence. He handed over important personal documents and other valuable data. Against this backdrop, the analysts at The Telegraph point out that the Putin-led Russian government is continuing its course of authoritarianism resembling USSR 2.0. The latest crackdown on opposition leaders and independent journalists only exacerbates the country's crisis. But despite these challenges, new opportunities for opposition forces are beginning to emerge. According to experts, support from international partners is growing and the exchange of information between the militaries is giving new chances for revitalizing the opposition. For example, successful sabotage and actions damaging the Russian army may become a catalyst for changes in society. It is expected that with increased international support, Russian activists and the military, dissatisfied with the Kremlin's aggressive policies, may unite. This opens up the possibility for new forms of resistance within Russia as well as boosting the morale of opposition forces. An Israeli airstrike struck a residential building near the Lebanese capital Beirut on Tuesday, causing damage and blowing out windows in the area. The strike appeared to hit an apartment in the building on the southern highway leading up to Beirut International Airport, and about 100 meters yards, from the Iranian embassy. The Israeli military said it carried out an attack in Beirut, without giving further details. There was no immediate word on casualties. <laughs> The Israeli military began what it called a limited, localized operation against Hezbollah targets in southern Lebanon on Tuesday carrying out targeted ground raids in villages close to the Israeli border. The targets, it said, pose an immediate threat to Israeli communities in northern Israel. Israel Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu issued a warning Monday to Iran, which backs Hezbollah and Hamas. There is nowhere in the Middle East Israel cannot reach, Netanyahu said, just days after an airstrike south of Beirut killed the leader of the Lebanese Hezbollah group, which is backed by Tehran. Hezbollah's acting leader, Naim Qasim, promised the group will fight on following the death Friday of its longtime chief Hassan Nasrallah. Israel has also assassinated several of the group's top commanders in recent days. Qasim said the group's fighters are ready and the slain commanders have already been replaced.
Israel and Hezbollah have traded fire across the Lebanon border almost daily since October 8, the day after Hamas sent fighters into Israel and sparked the war in Gaza. It's been almost a year since some 250 people were abducted from Israel, and friends and family are worried about their loved ones as attention turns away from hostages and north toward Lebanon.